In this video, we will discuss how to calculate dislocation density from XRD data using origin. Dislocation density, which is denoted by delta R rho, it is a measure of the number of dislocations in a unit volume, that is, the length of dislocation lines per unit volume with dimensions of 1 over meter square. Or we count the number of dislocation lines that thread a unit area of surface. We calculate the dislocation density of nanomaterials as delta equal 1 over d square, where d is the average crystallite size in nanometer, so it is in units of 1 over nanometer square. We can calculate the crystallite size by the Scherer equation, which is d equals k lambda over beta cos theta. We have already discussed this in details in this video tutorial, and the link can be seen in the info card. Out of many types of dislocations, we can categorize them in two primary types, mobile and immobile. In mobile dislocations, we have edge and screw dislocations. Usually, we don't have edge or screw dislocations separately, but a mixture of both. We know that dislocations distort a crystal lattice, cause elastic stress, which results in strain energy. In order to achieve an ultimate strength of a material, dislocations are to be eliminated. From origin, we will find the values of full width that half maximum, which is beta, and the break's angle, theta. To find the values of beta and theta, let me start with the origin file. This is the XRD data file of LIF. Let me plot this data. I will now find the position of peaks and full width that have maximum values. Let us go to analysis, peaks and baseline, multiple peaks and open the dialog. Pick the peaks by selecting with a double click. Open the non-linear fit. Click one iteration to see everything is good. And then fit until converge. It will fit all the peaks. Click OK. So here I have fitted four peaks. Now go to the data under the nonlinear fit peak one. Under the summary tab, these are the two theta values. Let us copy the values. Go to the Excel template where the dislocation density can be calculated. This is the k value, the x ray wavelength, and here are the two theta values. Paste the copied values here. Now I will have to copy the beta values from origin. Now we can calculate the crystallite size with the help of Scherer equation. In this equation, I can see that k and lambda are being multiplied. I will have to convert the beta values in radians, which are in degrees by default. We are having two theta values here, so I will have to divide it by two to get theta. As Excel by default calculates the trigonometric functions in radians, so we will take radian beforehand to finally get the value in degrees. The whole result is divided by 10. To get the value in nanometer is we have lambda in angstrom. Let us drag for the other values of the crystallite sizes for all the peaks. Now we can calculate the dislocation density values. And here is the dislocation density. 
I can drag it for the other values. As exponential minus 4 is with all the values, so I can take this as common as 10 raised to the power minus 4. So here are the dislocation density values. In case we are interested in the average value of the dislocation density, then it is showing it here. Thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for more updates.